How's it going everybody? I know it's been a hot minute since I've made a video, but I wanted to make this video for a while now. I've compiled a list of my favorite and not so favorite things from uh, J-Rock in 2018. So as I'm recording this, it's early afternoon in New Year's Eve for me on the east side of North America. So I don't, I'm hoping to get this video tonight, but if not, Happy New Year's everybody. That's See where 2019 takes us. Um, for me personally, there's some good things coming up in 2019. Just strictly speaking, J-Rock wise, I don't really know of any albums per se coming up. Uh, but right off the bat, let me get two pros out of the way. Um, it was announced this year that, and I already bought the tickets for both of these shows, that in Orlando, since I live in Florida, Orlando, I believe it's March, 1OK Rock is coming. And I got my ticket for that. I'm going to be completely honest about this, though. I say it's a pro, but I'm kind of like, it's a middle thing, you know? Um, I used to love 1OK Rock. I did. I loved a lot of their albums, but, you know... Hate to be that fan, I guess, that says, they changed, they changed. I hate, I hate that. But they did. They got signed to an American label record, and their last album, full-length album, had two versions of it, the Japanese version and then the, the American version. And the American version was practically unlistenable to me, while the Japanese version had, like, two or three good songs on it. Ugh, it's so, so bad. And plus, some of the singles they've been releasing after that album have been good. None of them blew me away. None of them were like, this is awesome. 1OK Rock is like back on their game. And their last song, I forgot what it's called. But uh, you know what? This is going to be a long video, everybody. As you probably know uh, from the bottom of the video how long it is i don't know because i'm just going off the top of my head but i'm assuming this is going to be a long video so thanks for joining me on this but yeah so i'm going to talk about a lot of stuff but fuck it i might as well look up stuff stand out fit in okay that's what it's called here's what's up not a bad song i guess it's just a uh, first of all what a weird music video and like all the comments when it first came out were like this is so inspirational and so good. The music video makes no fucking sense. Like, you feel bad for the kid because he's being bullied because he's Asian in America and his parents are living, you know, are working, you know, in a restaurant and it's tougher. Like, you feel bad. But then he grows up and he defies his parents and then he dances. Like, something bad happens and then, like, some weird spirit? I don't know. It's so weird and makes zero sense. And then, like, the his life and his problems are cured by the power of dance. And then, whoop, goes back to being a child again. What? The video makes no fucking sense. And people are like, this is so good and so inspirational. First off, the song is... Eh. It's eh. It doesn't have the energy or the passion that 1OK Rock used to. But anyway, I'm going off the tangent. I just didn't care for the song. So obviously I'm going to be hearing that song live. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like, eh. However, probably the best news of 2018. Gazette are doing another world tour. After almost three years. It's been three years. It's going to be three years when they start. Now, uh, they announced it on their Twitter. You can check the dates now. I believe you can buy... You, at least for me, I'm going again to Dallas. They're coming pretty much to the same venues that they went to before in the last world tour. Um, at least in North America-wise, I believe. But they're kind of cutting some of the dates out that they did last time. I believe, at least for North America anyway, and Canada especially, they uh, cut out some dates. They... Um, so they're coming to the same at the Bomb Factory in Dallas. So if you're watching this and you want to see the Gazette live, I will be there May 4th uh, at the Bomb Factory. That's where they were last time. It's a great venue. No matter where you are, you get 
a great view of them. So I'm just like last time, I'm going to rush in. I'm probably going to be way back in line again, but I'll rush in, get whatever merch I can, and then just silently wait until they come out. So hopefully they do the same thing last time where it's just them, a one-man show. Yeah, I'll be driving from Florida again. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to the drive again, but uh, to see them, I already bought my tickets, so it's, it's happening. I cannot wait to see the Gazette again. Uh, the last time in 2016, best night of my life. So this to recreate that experience again, I cannot wait. I can't wait to see what songs they're going to do on top of the songs from their ninth album. So, that brings me to my first pro of the year, Gazette's ninth album. They came out with a new album, and um, I thought it was fantastic. A lot of people thought it was mediocre, apparently. My favorite song, now in my original review I said it was something, but hands down, my favorite song, and the song I cannot wait to see uh, them perform live is The Mortal. I think that is an incredibly powerful song. Luki kills it with the chorus. I was trying to search for it. Yeah. Yeah, but The Mortal, I mean, Abor God and uh, Two of a Kind, and of course Falling. Like, those songs are going to kill. So I cannot wait to see those so songs live, especially The Mortal. But, I'm, like, if you saw them live in their last world tour, the whole, like, beginning of the show was major just dogma it was just dogma which is still my favorite album by them so i'm curious if they're gonna throw any dogma songs uh that'd be great i personally would love to hear malum because when i saw them live the the day of the concert i believe was the day of or the day before it was the day before they released uh undying so they performed Undying live, but, oh god, I would love to hear Malum. That's probably one of my top three songs by Gazette. So, I don't know, but, I, and they also threw in Cockroach, was a pleasant surprise, but I'm very curious to see what older songs they're going to throw into the ninth songs that they're going to be playing. So, very, 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 very much looking forward to seeing that. Check the dates, see if they're coming near you. It's pretty much the same as last time they did it just a little bit less so okay so yeah a pro was gazette's new album anything about the gazette is usually a pro for me always a pro so far for me I just they're human you know they might make mistakes here and there so but i'm still you know positive so yeah very much looking forward to that um so i feel like what i'm gonna do so i just got one pro you know what I got a pen. I got a list, so I'm just gonna mark off what I have on my list. Talk about each of them, pros, cons, and yeah, end the video there. So I made this list about a week ago, and I've been thinking about it. There's some things here and there I would like to add. Like there's some good albums, like All These put out good albums. Uh, Dexcore put out good albums, which I've been getting into this year. Um, there's some albums here and there are like, yeah, pretty good. But, I don't know, I just don't want to de dedicate too much time to that. Because a lot of the stuff here, I will be talking a lot. So, I think what I'm going to do is do like pro, con, pro, con, pro, con. I have more pros than cons this year. So, since I just did a pro, let's do a con. I kind of feel bad talking about this, especially right after the Gazette's album. But, fuck it, this is the first con I wrote down. I know people are going to give me shit because they already gave me shit for it. But the next kind of I'll just talk about briefly is Duran Gray's newest album they came out with. Eh. I, I wrote Duran Gray. Meh. That's just the best way I can describe it. I'm sorry. Like, I still love the band. I'm still very much looking forward to seeing what else they do. It's just not for me. It was okay. I listened to it quite a few times actually and i'll probably listen to more there's it's not a horrible album i wouldn't even say it's a bad album just not what i would expect from the professionalism that is duran gray that is and obviously they're not professionals and corporate professionals they're their own unique way of being they're good at what they do 
And because I have gotten a, such a great taste of Duran Grey, especially with Arke, um, yeah, their newest album didn't uh, didn't get me. So there's one. All right, so back to pros. People might disagree with me on this. So apparently, remember the band Screw with B.O. as the lead singer? I loved them. They disbanded the same time Gorugamesh disbanded, uh, which is a while ago now, which is insane to think about. However, this is a pro for me, people, and I know people didn't like B.O., his singing. I know people didn't like Screw, but they kind of came back this year. Uh, Christ, dude. Christ is Bo's new band. Actually, someone help me out in the chat. I didn't. I'm not. I didn't fully dig into research and all that stuff. Is it Screw? Obviously, it's not the bassist. He left and he went to fashion. Right. He wanted to be. A, he wanted to get in, get into the fashion industry. Right. I'm not crazy. I read that somewhere. Right. Like he's in the fashion industry now. He decided I don't want to be a bassist in a rock band anymore. I wanted to, to get into fashion. More power to him. I hope he's been successful in it. But uh, Christ, is it screw the rest of the members with a different bassist? Because holy shit, their mini album sounds just like Screw, and I love it. Um, hold on, let me. What was the name of the song? They have a music video for it. Let me look it up. It is a really good song. It's not. Don't be silly. Ring the changes. Great fucking song. I love it. I love the drumming, the guitars. B.O. does his, you know, weird kind of singing, kind of speaking thing. So if you love Screw like I did, Christ, check them out. Uh, B.O. is back. Uh, the sound sounds just like Screw. Just like Screw. It's just they came back. It's a great album. Uh, it's six songs. I believe the first song is kind of like an introduction. So five songs. So I'm very much curious to see what Christ is going to do in 2018. So it's got me looking forward to it. So, all right. Oh, this con. Oh, this this hurts me. So I'm going to break. So in order to talk about this con, I got to talk about one of my pros. Because I always talk about these two bands together. Because they are members of one band from the past. And they always seem to put out music like right next to each other it always i think i brought this up before it feels like razor and the 13 are always competing with one another granted they were Sa sadie or sadie sadie i always say that wrong sadie granted they were you know two members from that band went to razor two members of that band went to 13 it always feels like I, maybe they're friendly competition i don't know anyway so here's the con Razor, here's the pro, the 13. They both put out uh, some music this year, was not impressed with Razor, and 13 killed it. I thought 13 is rising up and Razor is going down. Uh, Razor seemed, even though when they first started out, they were more like, we're going to be a more harder, traditional rock metal kind of thing. And 13 was like, when they started, people were criticizing their album because, like, this is too, like, electrical. This is too, there's a lot of, like, weird sounds in the rock music and just, uh, yeah, it's not going well. But um, I like the first album. I don't care. But the 13 is like, they stopped with all the electrical techno shit in the background and just, like, did more traditional hard metal. And Razor is going more pop. <laughs> it's their newest uh mini album oof not a fan not a fan of that at all like i think there were some songs on it i enjoyed uh yeah not invisible five songs there were some songs on it i enjoyed but ugh. not the biggest fan yeah but um and I believe the newest one by 13 is Lament, six songs. And that album kicks ass. Kicks ass. Uh, I believe the song I was a, really into was called The Depths of Despair. Really, check it out. 13 is rising. Razor is coming down, I'm afraid. Keep in mind, these are all my opinions. This is just my 
what I wanted to talk about in 2018. So, all right. So that's two right there. So, all right, we'll do, okay, I'm going to do another one about two. This is both a pro and a con. Miyavi. Miyavi has been, in my opinion, both a pro and a con of 2018 when it comes to J-Rock. The pro of what Miyavi has done is almost every month, I don't think every month of the year he put out music. I think he said he was going to put out like a single every year. I don't think he got some of the months. I could be wrong, but he put out a lot of music this year, but it wasn't every month. Um, the singles he put out this year were good. They're all pop, but they all sounded good. They were all funky and like, even though they're more of like a modern American take on like rap and pop music, I think what he added you know, the guitars and the people who we uh, featured on his songs. I don't know. I enjoyed all of his singles. I don't really have much bad to say about his singles. What I do have to say in a negative way is his latest album. He put it out late November, early December. Samurai Sessions 3. Oh, boy. Miyabi. Actually, I didn't even buy this. I didn't even download it. I have Amazon Music. So I listened to it on Amazon Music. I tried giving it a chance, guys. I tried. I I remember saying when Miyavi switched up his style from like the samurai guitarist to a pop rock, like not really taking the easy way out, but like he didn't focus so much on his guitar playing. He just focused more on creating good rhythms, good music overall, and featuring people. Um, I remember saying, you know, this is what Miyavi is. I'm accepting it. We kind of have to accept it. He's not going back to the samurai guitarist. Um, and what he's made. I love the Firebird. I love the other samurai sessions. I liked a lot of the music he put out. Uh, it's just good, like, music to move to, to drive to. And so I listened to Samurai Sessions 3. Oh my god, this album is just not good. I don't like a single song off of this album. I've listened to this twice at my job. I tried giving this a chance, guys. I tried. And the weirdest thing about this album is the very first track. It's not a song. It's an introduction where I guess Miyavi's kind of playing guitar in the background. And for some reason and somehow, Miyavi got or Samuel L. Jackson wanted to do a little collaboration. <laughs> yes, for some reason Samuel L. Jackson is in the very first track of this album. Now here's the screwed up part. Um I can't listen to that full song because Amazon Music will not allow you to listen to that song unless you buy the album. Cool. Yeah, let's lock the first and most interesting track. Hold on. Miyavi and Samuel L. Jackson? Kind of want to listen to that. Nah, you can't. I mean, I listened to the 30 second promo on Miyavi's official YouTube. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just an introduction. And it, of course, Samuel L. Jackson got a motherfucker in there. So, cool. All the songs are just meh to boring. It's just a boring album. It's just fucking boring. And I do not care for it. The other singles he put out had energy and had a good rhythm to it. His Samurai Sessions 3 is garbage. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Not a fan. All right. So Miyavi, both the pros and cons are good. Okay. So really, I only have two more cons. I'll just fucking get them out of the way and then talk about the few more I have one, two, three pros. Keep in mind, there's probably stuff I'm forgetting and all that, but this is just all I'm going to talk about. So, another con is Lynch's new album. Speak about boring. It was kind of boring. Uh, there was like a few songs that are like, I was like, ah, all right, there's some energy here. There's some good old-fashioned Lynch energy and... But the rest of the album is just kind of boring. They focused a little bit more on ballads and just taking it slower. And 
uh, did not care for the new Lynch album. Did not care for it. Now, on their Twitter right now, I actually just got off Twitter, and they're promoting, like, a new look. Have you, Check out Lynch's new look. They just came out with it. Uh, Hazuki, he looks kind of like a pop star with lipstick. Hazuki's been doing this weird thing where he's wearing lipstick and kind of, like, dragging it. I don't get it. <laughs> he's not trying to cross-dress. He's dressing like he usually does, although now he has his hair. He cut his hair, or he, like, decided not to slick it back, so it's just kind of like a pop star. He has bangs, and it's fluffy. Yeah, the members of uh, the other the other members of the band, too, they decided to go for more of, like, a pop or, like, a visual... Uh, Nagoya K. But it's not really Nagoya K. It's kind of Nagoya K mixed with a little visual K. It's weird. Check out their new look. I don't know how to feel about it, but... Usually this means that they're coming out with new music, so hopefully this new music can bring a little more passion and energy than their last album did, so not a fan of their new album. Okay, now this is potentially a big con for both this year and next year. Please, I'm, I'm going to need a little bit of help on this. I, I This is just something, an article I read about, so if there's any updates or any... Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this. There's some conflicting things here, but it's about Nocturnal Bloodlust. They're disbanding or losing members. So here's what I read. I forgot which Visual K uh, news site I read this from. But they mentioned that the guitarist, one of the guitarists or both of the guitarists, or like a couple members of the band or something, were... they. Pretty much the band found out that they were being shorted on money by their manager. And I believe it was the guitarist or some of the members of the band were like, I'm done. I'm not going to play anymore if this is what we got to go through. Which I totally get. I understand. Get your money. That's fucked up. I understand that there is some shady shit in the Visual K Japanese rock scene. It sucks that this happened. It sucks that it happened with Nocturnal Bloodlust. I was really looking forward to hearing more music from them. Can anyone give me an update? What's going on with Nocturnal Bloodlust? Because I don't know how... Did the manager situation get resolved? Did they sign to another record label? Because here's my question. Following them on Twitter, they're promoting... Uh, or actually, I don't know if they're promoting, but I think Dim Lim or some or Dexcore was promoting on Twitter how there's going to be a tour or a show in Japan where it's Nocturnal Bloodlust headlining... With Dexcore and Dim Lim and other bands in it. First off, holy shit, I want to see that show. God damn, I'm, I was born and I'm living in the wrong country. Because the music I love is over there. And that's a concert I would die to see. But, so, that I saw those advertisements after I heard about this manager situation. What's going on? Is Nocturnal Bloodlust disbanding? Are they replacing some of the members of the band? Is everything okay? Or are they going through changes? What is going on? That's all I want to know. Because that that sucks that Nocturnal Bloodlust being a good band and, correct me if I'm wrong, a fair, fairly popular band, right? They're pretty well known, I'd like to say. So, they've been around for a little while, so they had a future. What's going on? That's, that's not cool. I don't... No, it's not cool. Speaking of Dim Lim, holy shit, Dim Lim came out this year and well no they didn't come out this year they didn't come out this year right let me look up there no 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 they came out last year okay dim Lim did not come out this year however they kind of reinvented themselves with cheo dora a concept album where holy shit listen to this album definitely my top three albums of the year i would probably say gazette ninth cheo dora Second, I want to say, yeah, if we're going full length albums only, absolutely, I will give it to Cheo Dora. So, get this album. You can actually get it off Amazon. I'm assuming you probably get it off iTunes. I hate iTunes, so I don't know. But, uh, get the album. Absolutely amazing. I cannot recommend the album enough. This has made me very much look forward to what Dim Lim can do. Holy shit, that lead singer has a range like none other. 
and yeah, Dimlin, man. Interesting name, but very much looking forward to seeing where they're going to go with that. Okay, so this next con, actually the next two I have, the last two I have, are kind of, sort of, they're in the same ballpark. They're not the same thing, but they're in the same ballpark, and you'll understand what I mean by that in a second. Breaking Holiday. Holy shit. Stop this video right now if you have not heard Lilith by Breaking Holiday. Probably, alright, I would, I would say my top three songs of the year are The Mortal by Gazette, Vanitas by Dim Lim, and uh, Lilith by Breaking Holiday. If you don't know who Breaking Holiday are, they were another band before this. They made like a few singles and disbanded and did that thing where Japanese bands, um, well, they'll disband and then like a day later or some months later, they'll come back exactly the same members but change their name. Kind of don't understand that. Maybe they got a new record label. Maybe they have to change their name. Maybe they just didn't like their name and they'll change. Whatever. The members of the band are back. What you need to know is the lead singer is Jory and the bassist uh, is Aggie from Deluhi. And their drummer and their guitarist are fucking amazing. And you will really get a sense of how amazing they are. Um, I'm not saying they're Leda and Suchik. I'm not saying that. But holy shit, they can hold a candle to them. They can... They can be in the same ballpark, kind of. They can at least create music that sounds more Deluhi than what Far East Design has produced recently. And that's fucking Leda and Suchik. But Lilith, that is old school Deluhi. That is, uh, wasn't, didn't Jody, after Deluhi disbanded, he became a pop star. I remember seeing that and I remember watching his music video where he was legitimately all glamorized and singing and um that didn't work out for you did it man this is your calling you are an amazing vocalist and just when you have some of the best musicians behind you creating some amazing powerful music that's where he belongs and um breaking holiday lilith it's uh i think a two track two or three track uh let me see here single they have that's it that's all breaking Hol- yeah it's Lilith and Yummy. Both good songs. Lilith is amazing. Yummy is pretty good. Um, I'm just so glad that the members of Deluhi, even if they're not all together, are making music. They are incredibly talented. Some of the best in the world at what they do. So give Lilith a chance. And speaking of Deluhi, my final best news of 2018 for J-Rock is Deluhi's kinda coming back? Kinda. So, Twitter, their Twitter account, or members of the band on Twitter have kind of been like hinting. I just remember seeing a lot of things where it's like, oh, would you like Deluhi to come back? Would you be interested in just polls and stuff like that? And um, so they're kinda coming back. So, they're making... They're reimagining one of their albums, which I'm pretty sure they already did. They already remastered this album. It's a great album. And they're going to do it again or something? Like, I, or, like I, I'm not quite sure what they're doing with this album, but they're kind of remastering it again. Um, which one is it? Vandalism. They're, yeah, vandal, like they reimagined it. In like 2009 or something like that? Or 2015? I think it's 2015. I mean, it has Hybrid Truth, GLD, Revolver Blast. Uh, I mean, there's so many great songs. Was it? What was my Follow the Future? Or I'm not seeing it. Was that not on there? Or was it Skateboarding once again? Or it's not on there. I don't know. Or is that not on there? Well, anyway, they're kind of... Sort of remaking that again. But the cool thing is, well, yeah, Follow the Future. Oh, so that was on the other album. Okay, never mind. But um, they're doing, uh, I don't know if it's a tour or some lives, but they're coming back as a band to perform live in Japan. And again, 
I would kill to see that show. I would love to see Deluhi live. But good for you, Japan. You just have some of the most amazing musicians in the world and uh, get to see them perform live. Well, at least I saw Leda live uh, in May as Baby Metal, but Deluhi's kind of sort of coming back. So my hope is hopefully their lives do well. Hopefully this album will sell. I'll buy it. I'll buy it again because it is a great album. I mainly want to support them and I want them to be supported so they can come back for real. Don't get me wrong. I like Far East Design. However, they've kind of been, eh. I really want to hear more from Breaking Holiday, but I would love if all four of them got back together and made music again. So here's open to 2019 and stuff happens. So yeah. All right. That's my list. Like I said, there's probably stuff I forgot. Please let me know what your like top and bottom moments of 2018 were of the music that we love, J-Rock. And yeah, so here's hoping 2019 would be a better year. I'm going to see the Gazette live again, so cannot be... I'm so excited for that. Uh, Alright, I'm going to tune off here. I hope everyone has a great new year. Uh, be safe and all that stuff. You're humans. You're smart. You know what to do. Just have fun, but be smart. All right, everybody. Have a good night and see you next year.